Can't do anything about it. I'm going to tell somebody else something else. Quit running from stuff and start confronting more things in your life. Stop running from everything. Sometimes we find ourselves, boy, we like Carl. We, we like Carl, aren't we? We can start running. I mean, it seems like every time trouble comes up, let me slow this thing way down. Sometimes it feels like when we are confronted with something, some of us have the flight or fight syndrome, don't we? Some of us have been running from things this entire year. Some of us have been running from confronting things. I'm not going to even get in your business. That's between you and the Lord. But I can tell you this, before you go into 2011, stop running from whatever it is and you need to start confronting some things. I'm not telling you to go on your job and get yourself fired. I'm not telling you to go and cuss everybody out on your job. I'm hoping that you're not cussing at all. But I am telling you, there are some things in your life you will never get victory over anything in your life if you always find yourself running from it. Amen, somebody. It's hard sometimes to confront because then you're basically saying, Lord, I'm willing to accept even the fallout behind what could end up happening. Lord Jesus, I'm willing to accept whatever it is. I'm willing to accept it. I'm willing to go ahead through it and go ahead and take it. Quit running. Quit running. Quit running. Quit running. God has given you power, so quit running. But some of us keep on running. Oh, God, and when we keep on running, it creates fear on the inside of us. Someone say fear. Yeah, it creates fear on the inside of us. And God does not want you to have fear. Don't be afraid of what the devil can throw at you. Don't be afraid if people say that they're going to walk out of your life because you decide to confront something that wasn't quite right. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because what it's only going to do, if you keep running from it, the situation is only going to get what, somebody? It's only going to get worse. You cannot live your life running from stuff. You cannot live your life running, 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 running. You know what's right to do do and you won't even do it because you're afraid the bible says perfect love cast it out all fear the bible says fear has torment and when fear has torment that's basically telling us that it will stay with you over and over and over again has anybody ever been afraid of something up in here been afraid been afraid to confront it been afraid that somebody won't want to be my friend anymore if i really tell them the truth baby go ahead and tell them the truth especially if god has landed in your spirit go ahead and tell them the truth if something isn't quite right, go ahead and tell them the truth because otherwise you're leading them to believe. Lord Jesus, please help pastor. Oh God, you're leading them to believe that everything is right when everything may not necessarily be right. It stops right here. Somebody say it stops right here. I'm going to tell you something else. You're not, you're not a victim. Quit playing a victim. Sometimes we just play that victim role so well, don't we? Oh, yeah, I know we play victim sometimes. Yeah, everybody's out to get me. You play the victim a whole lot. Anybody ever played victim up here? You don't even have to raise your hand. You can just leave it down. Oh, God, you're not damaged goods. And sometimes we allow ourselves to be defined by that by playing the victim. You will never get to where God wants you to get if you always feel like somebody is victimizing you. You would never get to the next area in your life if you're always running from something and always afraid. Always afraid. I cannot do it. I can. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody say that with me. I can do what, everybody? All things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So don't you take down just because you're going through something real rough. I dare you to trust God in the midst of whatever it is. And the Bible basically tells us in the word of God over in Luke that he has, oh God, he has sent God to heal the brokenhearted. So those of you who've had your heart broken this year, those of you who've gone through some stressful situations this year, those of you who've gone through some things that have messed you up this year, I dare you to go ahead and give them to God. Give them to Jesus. Anybody else who's been struggling through some things this year, I I dare you to go ahead and give them to Jesus because my God basically tells us that he came to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind. The Bible tells me over in Matthew chapter 11, 28, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what somebody? Rest. God says, take my yoke up on you. You're going to go through something, but God says, I want you to take my yoke up on you, and I want you to learn 
for me. Now that yoke, a yoke is a binding device. In other words, that device is hooking two animals or two things up that are going for the same cause. Now God has in mind, I want you to listen to me very carefully here. God has something very specific for you this entire year and coming into next year. I want you to understand who you're actually yoked up with. That's the person next to you. Who are you yoked up with? I want you to tell them like you really mean it. Who are you really yoked up with? Now, if you have some crazy stuff coming out your mouth, you can't be yoked up with God. But who are you actually yoked up with? Jesus wants you to know that regardless of what you're going through, if you're yoked up with God, the best things are going to come about in your life. He, God, God sees the best in you when everybody else has seen the worst in you. God sees the best in you. Even in the midst of your mistakes, God still sees the best in you. Who are you yoked up with the next time when you go to the doctor? and you hear a bad report. Who are you yoked up with? You better tell them I'm yoked up with the healer. I'm yoked up with the one who's able to give me my healing. Who are you yoked up with the next time you feel like you can't move another step? The Bible tells me over in Psalms 27, oh God, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the what, everybody? The strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Bible says when the wicked, even mine enemies, came up on me to eat up my flesh. They did what? Stumbled and failed. That means whatever you go into next year, I don't care what devil throws whatever at you, you're still going to overcome. You're still going to overcome. You're still going to make it through whatever it is. And if God allows you to live, you're still going to make it. And when the devil comes at your peace, my Bible tells me over in Isaiah 9, 6, that God is the Prince of Peace. So if you're hooked up with the Prince of Peace, how can a devil shake up your mind. When you're hooked up with the Prince of Peace, don't you lose another night's sleep. You go ahead and sleep with God. You go ahead and say, God, it's no sense in both of us being up. And since you're the God who keeps Israel and you need a slumber nor a sleep, God, I'm going to bed and I'm going to let you deal with whatever it is that I'm still struggling with. The Bible says over in John 14, peace I leave with you. Oh God, my peace I give to you. And God gives you peace in the midst of your storm. God gives you peace when things are acting real bad in your life. God gives you peace when it seems like you're walking by yourself. God gives you peace when your mind is just running left and right. You're up there messing up at work because your mind is unstable. God gives you peace not when everything gets all right, but God gives you peace when things are real bad to help you to get all right. So you're going to make it just fine next year. Don't you be afraid to live and don't you be afraid of anything that God has for you. Nehemiah 8.10 tells me if the devil comes at your joy, the joy of the Lord is what somebody is my strength. And joy goes a whole lot deeper than just having a smile on your face. God can give you the strength to be able to keep on walking even though you heard something bad. Keep on walking even though you don't feel so well in your body. Keep on walking even though you may even feel discouraged yourself because I know I'm talking to some people this past year. I've had to encourage some people. In fact, you've had to even encourage yourself. And sometimes you say, Lord, I know what your word has to say, but I still just don't feel very encouraged. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you have no business being down on yourself. If you have the help of the Holy Ghost, you have no reason being discouraged. If you have the hope, oh God, the help of the Holy Ghost, you have no reason to be distressed. You have no reason to be depressed. You have no reason to be oppressed. You have no reason to be down on yourself because God, the same God who made you, the same God who kept you, the same God who is keeping you is the same God who's going to give you victory. So go ahead and keep your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you are suffering from a love deficiency where you feel like nobody wants to be in your life and even the people who are closest to you just don't love you like they should. The Bible tells us over oh, in Romans chapter 8 who shall separate us from the love of Christ. You need to remember who you're hooked up with this entire year and this year coming into 2011. You need to remember that if God can't keep me I can't keep myself. You need to remember that God has allowed me to survive. How many survivors are in this house right now? 
How many survivors are in this house right now and you know that you would have been dead and in your grave? Who can separate me from the love of God? Oh God, shall peril, shall sword. Nothing can separate me from God's love. So that means I can go through anything this year if God is with me. I can go through anything if God stays with me. No trial and no test is going to whip me. I am only going to be victorious and it's my decision to be victorious. It is my decision to give God glory in the midst of hard things. It is my decision not to get pessimistic. It is my decision not to complain. I choose to praise. How many else of me in here choose to praise? I don't choose to complain, but I choose to praise. I choose to give God praise even when I don't feel well in my body. I choose to praise even though my situation just got worse instead of getting better. I choose to praise even though people have walked away from me. I choose to praise even though things on my job may not be so well. I choose to praise even though I still have a headache and I believe in God for my healing. I choose to praise even though you may have just heard something at the doctor's office that's contradistinctive to your faith. I choose to praise. I choose to give God glory and no devil in hell is going to stop me from praising God. Tell the person next to you, don't you stop praising God. Don't you stop trusting God. Don't you stop. Don't you stop. Now that's one thing that y'all don't want you to stop. I want you to stop the complaining. I want you to stop getting down on yourself. I want you to stop holding yourself in condemnation. Some people who are listening to me right now, you need to forgive yourself from some things that you've gone through this year. You need to forgive yourself. Quit whipping yourself over something that you did. It's already done. Why are you still whipping yourself? Why are you still paying interest on something that God has actually forgiven you of? If God forgave you, forget the devil. If God forgave you, forget those people who are still talking. If God forgave you, you can even forget that negative part of your mind and say, I am forgiven. And Romans chapter 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes, I made some mistakes, but God, I'm still going to bless you. Yes, I know I'm not perfect, but God, I'm still going to bless you because I know that Philippians 1, 6, he who had begun a good work in me is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means God is not through with you yet. Tell him next to you, God isn't through with you yet. God isn't through with you yet. I don't care what your problem is. God is not through with you yet. I don't care what you still been praying about. God is not through with you yet. And I guarantee you, you are going to be victorious. This year is your year. Somebody said last year was my year. Yeah, last year was my year. And guess what? This year is going to be my year too. And it's not going to be because of some catchphrase. It's not going to be because somebody gave me a raise. This year is my year because God is with me. This year is my year because I still serve an awesome God. This year is my year even though I may go through the bowels of hell. Oh God, if God is with me, I can make it through whatever it is that I face in my life. This year is my year. I choose to praise God in the midst of a hard time. I choose to praise God even when I don't understand what's going on. I choose to praise God even if your family walks away from you. You need to choose to praise God regardless of whatever it is that you may face. I don't care if your bank account is negative right now. I choose to praise God because I know that if God can't give it to me, I can't get it anyway. But Philippians also tells me, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I choose to praise him. I choose to praise him. I choose to praise him. Anybody else in here choose to praise God? It is my choice. It is my choice. I'm not going to complain. You better stop that complaining. Don't you complain because God could allow you to go through something that strickens you down to a bed. I guarantee you, you think things couldn't get worse? Things could always get worse. But I choose to praise God right now, right where I am. And guess what? If things do get worse, I'm still going to praise God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The uncle shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnificent.
magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We can go on down a little bit further. Lord, I just thank you. God, I just praise you. God, I just give you glory because I would have fainted.